Welcome back to Timo's Dinky Detailing. Today I'm going to be doing a Corgi toy, a 230 Mustang Fastback 2 Plus 2. This came in a batch with another uh, toy that was the, uh, a basket case as well. Uh, this one is in it's actually in very very poor condition it's been repainted by a child but it's also been severely damaged the you can see the front bumper there is worn down it's broken off there's even a piece of the base that has broken clear off that i'm going to have to replace uh, the back window is cracked so let's have a little closer look you can see it's quite rough uh, especially on the front the doors are very floppy one thing it has is uh, they have very good springs on this model, I have to say. So two rivets to take it off. And this I did this already. A lot. This has been taking a long time to do this one. And I don't remember why I decided to try to do this in the drill press instead of in the milling machine. Uh, at any rate, it didn't work out that great. I had some trouble getting it on center. Uh, I'm not going to show you fixing that up. It wasn't that big a deal. So anyway, the base comes off. You can see there's a, a wing missing on the front there. And here you can see these little pieces. That's the front bumper, and this is the rear bumper. And they would have been nice and shiny chrome, so I guess that's why they did it. Uh, interior is cracked. It's kind of brittle. Uh, its colors have faded. Uh, and you can get those doors off of there. And this is the dashboard. End is broken off. I'll have to fix that. And the windshield is in very rough condition. Uh, I could polish it up, except there's a big crack on it. I'm going to order a new windshield for this one. So first step is I'm going to take the paint off of it. And I'm going to be using caustic soda. So I put the parts into a plastic container to go outside. Pour boiling water in, and then I pour some caustic soda. This is something I've been questioning, and people are saying not to use it because it can corrode the metal on the model. So I'm going to be looking for a paint stripper. So here I've wire brushed the metal. You can see that there's a uh, pillar missing on the on the roof. And at this point, I'm going in. There's there. You can see I did some repair on that hole. All right. It's already a long video. I didn't want to go into how I repaired that. But I put the screws in. These are 440 uh, button head cap screws that I usually use. And here I'm uh, replacing the, uh, the front uh, right pillar. It's completely missing. And I'm going with crazy glue and putting in the little piece that I've filed to the right length. And then I'm going in with a little bit of extra crazy glue and baking soda. This, uh, the baking soda instantly uh, combines with the crazy glue to uh, make a hard surface, which is very handy. You can file it and then paint it. And I'm going in here with uh, Mr. Hobby white putty, also on the front fender. Don't worry about that. Uh, window pillar it actually broke off later and I replaced it so just don't tell anybody I did that and didn't show it so this is the this is the pillar that broke off and I replaced it later and I'm not going to show you that uh, we all go through that so this was a lot of work building up enough putty on the, this damaged fender there's a lot of damage and awkward damage to repair so there you can see it's filled in those chunks that are missing. Now initially I was shy of taking these uh, wheels off but then I decided well I'm going to replace them so I'm going in with the file to take the end of the mushroom off. Uh, I like to do it that way. It gives me control and uh, maybe I should go to doing it with the Dremel tool. Uh, we might do that in the future, but I gotta attach the Dremel tool so that it's on the workbench hanging from a stand, and then it would be a little bit more convenient uh, if it's using one of those snake cable things. So I got those off, and I will adapt those axles for my method. I'm gonna show you how I put the wheels on without hammering away at them. So here, 
Here I've put uh, the axle into the lathe and I'm drilling a hole in the end. It goes about a quarter inch deep and in that I'm going to fit a mushroom which is, go which is made out of uh, 14 gauge nails. So here's the uh, so here's the hole in the end of the axle. Now I've got this set up with a with a drill chuck in my uh, collet chuck and this gives me the capability of machining very very tiny parts. In this case it's a 14 gauge uh, wire nail and there I'm going in and I'm taking the uh, uh, rounding off the the head. Those heads are all every single one is is not centered. So there you go, I put the uh, mushroom on the end and I'll glue that later on. So here's, here's the uh, 3D printed parts, that's the rear bumper. And then the front bumper. They, they, they made these big elaborate things and I guess that goes into the uh, rest of the casting so that it stays in the right position. So I've reproduced it the same as they were. And then the front one, you can see that that whole portion is missing. So I've I've uh, modeled that into the front bumper. So when I put that on, I can uh, put some putty in there and make it all look like one piece. So here I'm test fitting. And put the base back on and you can see that it fits and looks good. There's a lot of work in getting that right, uh, but it would be boring to show you over and over test fitting and then changing it. But eventually I got it right. And at this point, I find I'm going to have to put it together in order to do uh, the putty work so that it repairs that uh, front of the base. So I'm gluing the bumper in place and putting it uh, with the with the top. It's being glued to the bottom, so it becomes it's going to become part of of the base. Uh, you're still going to be having to take the top off, so I'm not gluing it to the top. But there I've got the glue in there and then I go in with a bit of that uh, white putty and I will just sand that into position. So now uh, I mixed up the glue, I only did the front and so now i got to do the rear. So I put the rear one and do the same thing. Uh, unfortunately I had to make a second batch of glue to do this one. This is a five minute epoxy that I'm using. And then to clamp it in place I just put the screws into the into the base and hold it in place. Give it five minutes and then it's ready. So now take it apart again and I go into the spray booth. This is uh, this is white primer. Uh, actually I didn't get the uh, video of putting the uh, white paint on top. And this is the base. I actually painted it with uh, with white lacquer paint, but you don't see that. So pretend this is white lacquer paint. So I get the uh, body, the base, and the doors. So here it's got a beautiful coat of white lacquer paint. This is beautiful paint, I have to say. And I'm going to be taping it up because what I've decided is this is going to this is going to be a, uh, a 1960s NASCAR. So somebody uh, wanted to drive a NASCAR racing. So he goes to the dealer and he buys himself a uh, GT350. And it's already got a pretty good engine. And he can just do some uh, few changes here and there. And he's got a racing car uh, largely out of the factory. Now remember to like, share, and subscribe. Now this is actually a special episode because I now have a thousand subscribers, which is a pretty big deal, and I'm very happy to have achieved that. And uh, I'm going to see about monetizing and get a little more money to make some nice uh, new toys. So it's a lot of trouble getting the tape right I'm, I'm what i'm doing is i'm eyeballing mostly the dimensions you can see i measured a little bit too i'm trying to get it so that it looks straight and even and i'm being really really picky about it but i know if i don't do that it's not going to look good in the end and i'm not going to be happy with it 
So the way these things are painted is they go all over the all over the body and these stripes also go straight over the bumpers. This was the early times when they actually had painted bumpers. So I'm going with the uh, Vallejo uh, paint. Uh, it's a very nice paint for, for, for uh, airbrush and I love these metallic colors and this one is no exception. The other nice thing is it's already pre-mixed for spraying and so if I if I run out of paint in the uh, airbrush I can just squirt a little bit more in there and carry on. I don't have to mix up a special color. If you have to mix up a color well then obviously you're gonna have to mix up a little bit more paint to make sure you don't run out. As you can see I'm going on lightly with at first I don't want any paint getting underneath the tape. In this case it's pressed down pretty good. It's a pretty simple paint job or a taping job I guess. Uh, but still I go in lightly so that the uh, paint isn't going to bleed under the tape that's not pushed down completely or where there's panel lines. So again the same spray goes on to the doors. And I painted the whole base. The reason is these toys, actually the base was painted the body color in many cases. Uh, in this case it wasn't. It was painted a, a kind of a gold color. But if I did that then I would lose the uh, blue at the front and back where the where the body is visible. Uh, it's, and it, but it's part of the base. So I said okay you know what I'm going to paint the whole base blue as many Corgi toys were done. So there, I've got the tape off and my beautiful uh, white stripes. So now it's going to get decoration. It's a race car, so it's got to have a number on the door. And I'm using this fine foil with the uh, white circle. And I'm learning how to use this, uh, this uh, foil. It's very, very fine if you're doing, uh, you know, you're printing your own uh, decals. Uh, it's a, usually a thicker material but this is a fancier one it's more expensive and it's very very thin so it can curl up at the edges so on this one I don't do it quite right but I figured out a way of doing it it's just there I pulled the the decal off of the the backing paper uh, and the paper by friction will stay against the model and that way uh, the edge of the of the uh, foil doesn't curl up. Once it curls up you can't straighten it out. So here some of them you'll see I do it. This one I didn't. I, I was still learning this. Um, later on you'll see that I, I actually put the put my thumb on there and I just moved the the foil off of the backing paper and and then I grab. See here I'm doing it the old-fashioned way. I pull it in this case it didn't curl up I was fortunate but I'm just learning this stuff this is this this foil is very fine it's it's kind of new to me and it and it can curl up and it can spoil the decal so these are the uh, advertising markings and I'm putting a white layer down and then I'll put the color layer over top of it I tried. I, I, I've done it before, where I printed the color over top of the white onto the same, onto the same foil, and it worked perfectly. But then other times it doesn't work. So it's a. I'm not going to take the chance. I'm not going to waste uh, this expensive foil. I'm just going to do it in two layers, which is which is the better way to do it, simpler way. So all of those stickers are on one piece, so that makes it a little bit easier. But then you've got to align. The whole thing and get it in the right position and then get it to stay there and dry up. So I put the white on there and I want it to be the yellow Goodyear color. Maybe it would have looked just as good in white even better but I decided to go with the yellow and that's the way it's gonna be kind of tricky getting that all it's a long decal so you got to get the whole thing perfectly aligned but in the end you can do it so it's not the end of the world and this one the uh, owner of the car is the sponsor and it's TDD racing 
again it's a two color and decal so first layer goes on is just white and then it has a shadow you can figure out for yourself what uh, TDD racing is so you can see it, it doesn't look right until you get those shadows in just the right position now the front grill this is of course a uh, GT350 so it has a different grill than what the this toy originally came with so I basically took an image of the actual uh, GT350 the Shelby uh, grill and I put that in the front instead of instead of the uh, the typical grill that you would buy out of the showroom as a regular Mustang and here I'm detailing with uh, with this is a Vallejo silver paint it's not as shiny as the chrome stuff but it's a lot more durable the chrome stuff gives me a lot of trouble in this case I'm just gonna do it the the chrome with the uh, Vallejo silver And the tail light lenses. It's convenient that uh, the the lenses are very nicely cast in, so it's fairly easy to get the red in there. I, I did it quickly, but I came afterwards to fix those uh, lenses. So here I've got a box of of diamonds. Real. This is a. This has got to be three carats. Anyway, it, yeah, of course it's just glass. These the I bought these from a from a guy on. Uh, on eBay and he's in uh, Winnipeg and I think he bought a large collection so he's selling extra ones all right test fitted those in the uh, in the sockets and I used tape to get them back out and then I put a little bit I'm using just white glue the wood glue I find I like to use that sometimes uh, because it has a long a long time where it's where it's uh, workable and if you want to get them off, you just soak them in, in water. There, I'm showing you how they sparkle a little bit. So I realized I didn't have enough uh, advertising on this car. And so I added a few more on the door, spreading from that front fender. In the, in the 60s, this is, this is how the advertising was done. It was, nowadays, they paint the whole car with, uh, with all fancy paint job. And there's uh, different logos all over it. On the roof but but in the 60s it was a lot simpler they 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 actually took the stickers from the parts that were put on the car uh, and they put them on the front fender and spreading onto the door and they would put major advertisers on the rear fenders and that was about it so i'm trying to create this as a period car as a period uh stock car now corgi didn't make uh, racing wheels and there's no company like Samed wheels that makes uh, replacement wheels for uh, for Hot Wheels and all you all you can do is make your own so uh, so I decided I 3d printed these uh, mag wheels
and so I could paint those uh, the forward on the front. So these are not being glued in. Uh, I designed them with holes in the back so they fit onto the holes or onto the little pegs that are in those doors. So here's a little bit of white glue and I glue my Recaro uh, racing seat into the car. So now I've got those uh, those axles that have been modified and my wheels and I don't have to hammer anything because I've got those holes in the end and you'll see I have those little 14 gauge nails that have been modified and cut short and I put a little bit of 5 minute epoxy and I take my little end, my little mushroom, and push it in there. Again on the front one as well. It's a pretty simple operation and there's no risk of damaging the almost finished model. So now it's time to put the rest of it together. First the window goes in. I discovered that the window, the replacement window, comes with little pegs. I had to file those down. You had to get them to the right level in order for these doors to work properly. In the end, I don't think those doors work properly. Those are a catastrophe and I should have just cut the hinge off of them and glued them in place because they drove me crazy. So here's the interior going in. I had to match the hole in the interior. I printed it to match. And there's that peg under the windshield. So it all lines up perfectly. So now the base goes on. And the base will go on, but it's a tricky thing. And you gotta squeeze the thing a lot. So I said, okay, why don't I just stick the screw in the back and then press it in and put the screw in the front and all the while I'm holding those doors because those doors if you don't hold on to them the darn things are going to fall out and you have to start all over again so it's quite a it's quite a dainty operation to get this thing together I don't know how they did it in the factory they probably had some jigs that uh, that would make it work so there it's finished So let's remind you of what we started out with. So this is what it looked like at the beginning. Catastrophe, let's see what it looks like now. Well, I think that's a pretty spectacular result and I'm really pleased with it. I had a lot of trouble with this model and I did a lot of stuff on it. So it took a long time while I was doing uh, some other models, but I'm, I'm very happy how it came out in the end. Now you can see the doors are a problem, but uh, anyway, that's the way it is. That's the way it came out of the factory with those crappy doors. Uh, but there it is. I think it's just beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Timo's Dinky Detailing. Uh, remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next one because there's really good ones coming up. So in the meantime, be seeing you.